Hello, YouTubers. This is a new session where I get to show you the equivalent of a hello world in AI engineering. In this session, I'm going to show you how you can build a large language model from scratch, from nothing. You're going to, you're going to own the data. You're going to own the model. You can put your name on it. You can, you know, you know, share it with others, you know, put it on a network and let other talk to it. It doesn't matter. This is the equivalent of that. And listen to me very well, because this is the right introductory video that you want to watch when it comes to entering into AI engineering. I'm not going to throw words that get you confused and look around and trying to understand what it is. Stay with me here. This is good for you. This is going to help you transform into this new industry. So for starters, you know, what are we doing here? I mean, you talk to ChatGPT, you talk to Claude, you talk to all these different systems and underlying under underneath these systems, there is data and decision and direction, right? There's data that gets fed into these models, contextual data, data that comes from everywhere. And then there is the brain, which is the large language model. And then there is a direction which takes action and whatnot. Today, I want to talk about this. Let me just kind of explain to you how the world works today in terms of AI. You pass in data, that data goes into the decision making, decision, and then a direction happen. A direction happen, right? The data can be anything, right? I'm going to just say context here for the time being, but it's a lot more than that. The decision is your large language model. And the direction is basically the MCP, the, the agentic aspect of it, the, 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 the tools, the actions that, you know, things happen. So when you go and talk to chat GPT or talk to any AI, you know, um, system, it takes that data from you. That's also the prompt. And then it goes and send it, sends it to a large language model or large language models and let it do some planning, let it do some thinking, and then it triggers an action to be taken. Like when you go and say, hey, ChatGPT, what's the weather today? It'll try and go and find the weather for you. You gave it data, it did some thinking, and then it, it took a decision. I'm not going to talk about these two today. Maybe partially the data. I want to talk about large language models. These brains, right? The brain. How does this brain work, right? How do they build it from scratch? How does it work? Here's the thing. To build a brain, you need, again, you need data to teach that brain what to learn. And then you need to do some processing, tokenization, training, some stuff that happens there. And then from the other side, you get a large language model. That's all that it is. Just burn that in your brain, right? You take, you give it some training data. It's just really a file that's full of stuff, some data. Right. And then that stuff turns into turns into <clears throat> uh, vectors, values, whatever, into math, basically. And then at the very end, you get, you know, a large language model. OK, let's do that today. Let me show you that in action. Here's an example of a bunch of data that I have for you. This is just simple data. It has hello. It has whatever, you know, great, right? Let me kind of zoom in a little bit for you so you can see. So all I'm doing here is that I'm saying, I'm going to teach my new tiny language model, you know, that when a user says hello, you say world. And when a user says hi, you say hello. No magic. It's super simple, super simple, right? In the training part of it, I'm basically going and saying, you need to zoom out a little bit. <laughs> So in the training part of it, I'm basically creating a tokenizer, which basically takes every word that you have here in that text, assigns it an ID and a random weight into some, some table. It doesn't create the random weight. The random weight is already there, right? But that weight is going to change later, right? So this is what I'm basically doing. I'm saying, give me a tokenizer and then build some samples. Here's the prompt, the completion, EOS, end of sentence token. And then do some work there with the inputs and outputs. Not going to dig into that for now. You can take the, you know, the code and kind of dig into it. And then basically, I'm basically saying, take the, load these examples from this file and create a data set. Remember, that's number one thing. That's the data that we need right here. Right now we need to initialize a model, right? So this is my model. 
I'm putting I'm putting in some parameters for it. Here's the vocabulary size. Here's the positions. Here's all that fun stuff. And then go and initialize a model. I didn't connect the data with that initial model yet. Didn't do anything yet. And then the training is basically what combines a model to the data. So essentially what's happening here in terms of kind of processing, we have data set like this, and we have a model, just an initial model like this. And then in between those, what's doing the work from here to here like this is the training aspect of this, the training aspect of it here. So that's training, right? That's an initial model training. What comes from the other side is your large language model, basically your LLM, LLM, like that. Just remember this, put this in your head, right? You have data, you have a model, you do some training, and then you produce a large language model. Okay, let's go back here and do that. So what I did was I said, I'm going to create tiny LLM. That's an oxymoron because it's tiny, large language model. You know, it doesn't make any sense, but I'm going to run this code right now. It's going to show you some very nice progress bar here. And what it's basically, it's going to run super fast because, well, sign, like relatively fast. As you can see here, look how much time it's going to take. This is a super powerful machine that I'm running on right now. And look how long it's still taking between maybe a minute, minute and a half, maybe less, maybe 30 seconds. I don't know. Just for a couple of prompts, a couple of documents, right? Imagine how long it takes when you train it on something like the pile. Look it up. The pile is literally terabytes of data out there. But here's the, you know, I digress. This Here's the part. It already built that tiny LLM for me. It's not a GGuff format that we can use and share with tiny LLM and all that. Not yet. But it built that model for me. I, I have a script in here that tests this. It basically going to go and say, if you, the user says hello, tell me what the assistant is going to respond with. So I'm going to go and run this right now. Here we go. Look, it responded with world. Hello, world. Just like how we trained it. Hello, world. Well, let's try the other one. Maybe I'm maybe I'm playing with you. Maybe if I go and say hi, it should say hello. Let's see how that works. There you go. Hi, hello. So far, so good. Amazing. No problem, right? Now, you might be laughing. If you're a software engineer, you might be now laughing like, Hassan, what are you doing? You know, this is... I could just write this in C-sharp code. I don't need to do all this, write 20 lines of code and training and whatnot. I don't know how many lines of code, but, you know, to just say this, I could just build a dictionary. And when the user sends hi, it says hello. And when it sends hello, it says world. It's like, yeah, that's great. But check this out. What if I said, hey, I didn't train it on hey. I didn't tell it what to do when it receives an input that it's not programmed to do. This right here is the shift between being a software engineer into an AI engineer. Watch this. I said, hey, it said hello. But I didn't train it on hey. How did that work? That's where all the magic is, right? It saw hi. It kind of moved, you know, the vector, you know, embedding values, you know, into a certain weight in a certain direction that lives in that area called greetings and now it's responding to you accordingly even if you say something crazy like yo right something cool like yo like that watch this cool for school say and say yo it says hello this part right here is what's going to distinguish a software engineer that says that the data Sorry about that. So this part right here is the one that kind of distinguishes between, oh, the data has to be specific. Uh, I have to have if-else statements. There's no if-else statements here. It's all math, but we'll get to that part in a second. But that's that part. That's that part that I wanted you to see, right? Right here and then, you do understand why this is a completely new era and a new world that we're living in. Now, let's turn this into... 
a giga file and let's try to use that giga file so i have a script in here that will basically just pick up you know llama cpp you're gonna have to download llama cpp you just clone clone the repository you don't have to build anything but it, you have to build it just to kind of run it but let's just build the giga file right here this is just literally me just pulling your foot and here's a giga file right here now can i prompt that giga file can i go and talk to it let's see i'm gonna talk to lots and lots of commands yeah here you go so watch this i'm gonna try to prompt that tiny llm gguf right and i'm gonna say to it something like user hello right and i'm gonna expect or maybe i could just say hello let's just see that let's see it's not recognizable Oh, I need to I need to be in that directory. So llama cpp, and then I think I think it's uh, uh, release or build cd build. There you go. And then I think ls, and then I think I think I'm in the right directory. Or maybe cd source or bin. And then CD release. There you go. Now I'm inside of Llama CPP. This is just for testing purposes. You don't have to do that part. If you have something else that runs a giga file, please go ahead and do it. But this is just for testing. Let's see here. Here you go. Now it's going crazy. It's saying hello, 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 hello. You know, as I said, hello. Let's see if I say, let's clear this. So it's a tiny baby, baby, tiny, tiny, uh, large language model. So it does things. Hello. Look at that. Watch this. Do you see how user hello assistant world? Do you see that part? So it's a GGAF. I'll prove it to you. I'll I'll spin up uh, PRLM, which is an app that allows me to kind of um, run GGAF files. I'm gonna delete the one that I had before, and then I'm gonna go and add import a tiny LLM in here. So you can see a tiny LLM right here. I'm gonna go into the chat. I'm going to create a new chat. I'm going to make it local. I'm going to pick up tiny LLM. You can do this with anything. Just run it with Olama or LM Studio, whatever you want. And I'm going to try it. I'm just going to say uh, hi, like that. Hello, 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 like that. What if I said um, user, hi. Look, it's responding and saying hello, like that. Watch. And then what if I said user, hello it should say world boom right there you just build a large language model and you can interact with it in any platform you like it doesn't matter what this platform is right i'm going to give you that code the point of the of this video literally to just kind of get you interested and in playing around with building a a fully owned yours large language model from scratch this is the hello world for you. This is your moment. Um, I'm not going to go any further than this. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please feel free to drop a comment in the comment section. The very next session is going to demystify that even further. You know, how these tokens turn into IDs and how these IDs are assigned uh, vectors and how these vectors kind of change the more you train, you know, your model. So much fun stuff. I promise you, you're going to love, love, love what's going on there. And you're going to see in reality how this amazing technology, you know, emerging and how it's going to be the future for uh, for software, for human machine interactions in general. Thank you so much. Take care. See you in another session.